Greetings. There will be times along your journey when you know that certain choices have to be made. For me, one of those larger choices, if you will, was being estranged from family. For a majority of my life, I blindly trusted that those labeled as family had my best intentions at heart. Couldn't be further away from the truth. Along the journey, most of the issues or problems that I found myself battling with were rooted in the relationships that I held through family bonds. Just not to demonize them or demonize myself. It was a simple observation that I made and came to terms with. Now, along the, the path of discovering more about who I am, who I desire to be, many ups and downs, and they still continue. But one thing that struck out to me is very interesting was the more I began to focus on building a better self-concept, the more resistance I got from family. Even more so, the more clarity I got in the reality of the relationships that I held with my family. Went through the five stages of grief, went through, you know, all the, I went through the denial, I went through the, uh, the sadness, the depression. I went through it all, and I went through it alone. It's okay. <laughs> it's more than okay. Because I remember the moment where it clicked, and I forgave him. I forgave him not in the sense of I reestablished those bonds. Oh, no. I stepped away from all of them. Because I began to see that there was a, a pattern of thought that my family is caught up in. Was. I don't know what they're doing now. And when I fed into it, my, my idea of self was more about misery. And misery loves company, right? But when I began to shake that concept of self and see myself in a different light, I began to realize what I had been lost in for so long. And some people would say it, it was, uh, I was dealing with narcissists. I don't, I don't know. I'm not a medical professional, put it like that. I would say there were many narcissistic tendencies. You know, when I look up the definition, yeah, they were narcissists in my eyes, but hey, you call it what you will. But I began to see how strong I was without knowing it. And when I became aware of that, I became even stronger. Because I realized how strong I had to be to not only remove myself out of those relationships, but also to stand on my own. Because that's something that uh, the family I frequented the most, they didn't choose to do. They choose to band, they chose, I should say, to band together and beat up on anybody any way they could. Not physically, but mentally. Tear you down verbally. Uh, manage your reputation in a way that always keeps you in a place of being lower than them. Making you second guess yourself. No matter how true your statement was. In your reality and theirs. They will constantly keep you on your back foot mentally. And when I stopped allowing that to happen in my life. Man, I kicked the hornet's nest. <laughs> Flying monkeys came from everywhere. Uh, embarrassing videos put on... Uh, Put on social media to get me laughed at and ridiculed. Okay. Family meanings held just to degrade my name. Just to assault my character. Okay. People approaching me at uh, life changes in my life. Very vulnerable moments. And 
speaking to me or checking in with me just so they can relay the information to others and they can build and create a story. All right. And even before these happenings, I remember a period when I, was, I had actually moved away to another state in the military. And these stories were still being fed. I had no idea because at that time I was clueless. At that time, I did not believe that I would be that important that people would be creating this narrative while I was in a whole other state, halfway around the world. But it didn't change anything. See, what I began to realize was it was always there. Those stories were always being created because of those people that I was around. And I had to make peace with that. Now, I'm going to a long history of why they may be like that, but at this point, I, I just don't care. I remove myself from that environment. I'm sharing this with you because at some point there are going to be moments of clarity that you have and no one is going to be there with you to confirm it. No one is going to be there with you to validate it. That doesn't mean it's not true. Trust in yourself. There are going to be some changes when you trust in yourself. But that's all right. Keep moving. Keep trusting. Build that relationship with yourself. Because what you'll come to realize is, even if your situation is similar to mine, you'll realize that people would change their appearance of who they are just to get close to you and attempt to run the same game. Nah. The more you trust on yourself, the more you trust in yourself, I should say. You'll either see that they step away or they give you that space. Or when they do come around you, it's difficult for them to keep the mask on. Because you believe in who you are. And they will attempt to fight you. They will give you that resistance. Doesn't matter though. When you trust in who you are, when you know, nah. I understand what I'm seeing. I understand what I'm dealing with. They may not even be aware because they've been living in that in that manner for so long. They've been in that state of consciousness so long. It's just a regular day for them. But for you, when you know, no, I'm not interacting with that. I'm not entertaining that. And you stand firm in what you know, what you understand, what you believe. Yeah, they're not going to like it. That's okay. Move forward. Trust in yourself. Even when I make these videos, I, I don't speak too much about these personal aspects, but it's in a moment of being as transparent as I can. It was a moment of struggle for me. Because I didn't realize that I was giving all my value to others. I didn't realize that I was seeking so much for outside validation. I didn't even give myself validation. It wasn't until I gave myself validation that all those outside sources didn't matter. I stopped caring about being in the public eye a certain way. I stopped caring about certain appearances. I'm okay with being with myself, being at peace with myself. I, I understand that I love quiet time. That's a me thing. But I was surrounding myself with a bunch of people who are in misery when they're by themselves. They cannot stand the existence to be about themselves, so they will have any and everybody around them as much as possible. Because being by themselves was almost like torture. I didn't understand that. But when I began, when I began to trust more and lean into who I am, I could see it from the outside. And I could see the misery playing itself out. And it's different. It's different when you're not in it. It's different when you when you can step out of it and not connect with it so personally and just observe it. And then many things begin to make sense. You see the ones that manipulate you, play on your emotions. When you step out of the chaos that is their reality, you can see them a mile away. Those that used to contact me every other day or so every week or so you know just to see what's going on or update their room or their narrative about me all that's cut off 
those who bled me financially because I allowed them to. All that's cut off. Those who bled me for attention, all that's cut off. And then you can see how they interact with the world to fill that void. And it's interesting because whether it be parents, whether it be siblings, whether it be cousins, close or distant, don't matter, even friends, when you can see it and you see it coming, you're unfazed when it gets to you. People are gonna die. These people will use funerals to tuck on your emotional heartstrings. Unbothered. Unbothered. That's not to say I'm callous with the world, even callous when it comes to my family to a certain extent. No, I just have an understanding. I'm not going to allow certain happenings that naturally occur in life to be the reason I don't trust myself. A snake is a snake. And treating it like a dog is not going to change its nature. So when you're dealing with somebody or a group of people who have narcissistic tendencies or maybe just straight up narcissists, you know the nature, so act accordingly. That's the way I show respect. I respect the nature, not the appearance of. Nah. I'm going to respect what I know it to be. Dealing with my family and the capacity of blind trust bit me in the ass way too many times. And that trickled down to how I related to others in life. And then when I began to change that, my reality, I thought, would get smaller. No, the cir circle of people around me got smaller. I don't interact with anybody. And I'm okay with that. I'll share some videos. Cool. I'll uh, spend time with my daughter. Cool. Spend time with my dog. Cool. Outside of that, I'm by myself. And I have no complaints about it. Because I found a peace within myself. And that peace I found within myself is reflected in my environment that I establish every day. But it was so foreign to me at one point in my life that I was scared of it. And on the other side of that fear was exactly what I was looking for. On the other side of being scared of disappointing my family and my supposed friends was the thing that I was looking for my entire life, which was peace. Now there were, I mean, there was, a, there was some ugly moments there were also some beautiful ones. There was tears shed. There was a lot of arguments. But when I stopped feeding into it, that's when things change. When I accepted it just because you are my brother doesn't mean that you honor that kinship the same way I do. Just because you're my mother doesn't mean you honor that relationship the same way I do. Just because you're my father doesn't mean we have the same perception of what this relationship looks like. And that's okay. That is more than okay. I'm sharing these things with you because I need you to know that your reality is real to you. And sometimes those things that we hold on to are really the burdens that are holding us back from living a life of Acceptance within ourselves. Don't give others that power. Trust in who you are. I mean, I. This didn't start kicking in for me till my late twenties. I didn't start truly acting on it. I'll say, uh, for the majority of those relationships, I didn't act on it until uh, mid thirties. And I'm about to hit forty next month. Some of y'all older than me, some of y'all younger than me, some of y'all my same age. It's not an age thing, it's an awareness thing. I had to take baby steps. I had to cut off this person and that person. Then I had to have an altercation with this person or that person. But the more I stood firm in who I am and who I know myself to be, the more the confidence built. 
And then I was able to take on the family in whole. And it's not about a battle. It's about establishing an understanding within myself. If I don't care how big the family is, they will not control who I am. That's mine. That's my authority. That's my responsibility. And I gave that away for too long. So no matter what you may be experiencing, it might not even be family for you. It might just be friends. It might be a significant other because I've been that route too. But when you see these people who have these certain tendencies, when you see people that rely on flying monkeys that keep you down, to keep your reputation down, well, don't worry about that. Act accordingly. Trust in nature. Trust in what you see. Don't blindly trust. Observe and understand what you're witnessing, what you're experiencing. Move forward with that information in a way that protects you. Sometimes you must remove yourself. I would advise you to do so. Sometimes you just have to maneuver different. Sometimes it appears that we're not able to escape. I didn't think I can get away from my family. That wasn't true. I didn't think I would be able to get out of my marriage. That wasn't true. And we all know the war exists, so it's not even about that. It was about how I viewed, how I perceived that I would be viewed by divorcing. Once I let that go, man, it's too easy. 24 hours, them papers were sent out. Because I had to understand that I was allowing other story to supersede mine. Nah, I know this not right. I know this marriage not working. It's been not working for a long time. And I've been allowing the the use of flying monkeys to guilt me or shame me into not making a decision. I know it's right for all parties involved. And in doing so, I'm a better father for my daughter. Now, she does have to interact with certain individuals, and I understand that. But I trust in knowing it by leading the example that I am. At some point, she will have to make certain choices too. And if I didn't make my person a person, if I didn't make myself who I am today, then I wouldn't be able to have certain tools to help her navigate so many situations and people. But you don't have to have children. It doesn't have to be your family. It could be strangers. It doesn't have to be your friends. Your story doesn't have to look exactly like mine. The nature of the beast is still the same. Don't allow these other people to control you. Don't allow these people to shame you or guilt you into not being who you are. And if they are doing that, truthfully reflect on if you're in the right situation, if you're in the right relationship, if you're in the correct environment for who you are. And even though you might not see the next step, you might not see the next destination. Trust me. Sometimes not knowing is better than sticking in a situation that you know will not change. It's all right. You're going to be judged regardless. So you might as well allow people to judge you for being who you trust yourself to be. And in doing that, <laughs> the love for yourself will grow and doing that the true love from others will be seen clear the discernment will be enhanced you'll realize that you are expert in the things that you do not want to invite into your reality and you will make choices to keep those things of the past out of your present and your future until next time, be blessed.